In this section, we'll be solving compound inequalities. Um, once we have them, the solution in inequality notation, we'll be graphing the solution on a number line. Um, and it looks like all of these compound inequalities will actually have to do a little rearranging to get it in proper form, but this isn't anything to write home about when we're actually gonna use some tools that we already know how to use. We've just never applied them to compound inequalities before. So let's take a look at the first example. We have minus two is less than or equal to x plus five, which is less than 12. Okay, so this would actually be um, our solution in inequality notation, except uh, it's not solved for x. We have an x plus five term here. But if we look at these as three different individual sections, three different terms, we have minus two, we have x plus five, and we have 12. We can deal with these individually. So if we had an equation here, how would we isolate x? Um, if we had a simple in in inequality, how would we isolate x? We would simply subtract five. Um, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side, but here we actually have, if you will, three sides or three terms. So we'll subtract five from all three terms. These two terms will cancel. So we have minus seven, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than seven. So basically all we did, if you look at it on a number line, we shifted um, our graph of our number line five spaces to the left. Um, this is just a little bit more simple to graph than the graph of x plus five given these two relationships. Okay, so now that we got, um, we have our solution set right here, we can go ahead and see what this graph looks like. So let's go ahead and put it on a number line. So that's in the negative direction, that's in the positive direction. Let's put zero in the middle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's positive seven. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's negative seven. Um, this doesn't have to be scaled, doesn't have to be perfect. We just wanna get a general idea of what um, the solution looks like on a number line. Okay, so let's take a look at our signs. Um, we have, well, this is an and compound inequality. So we know that our solution is gonna lie in the region between minus seven and seven. Um, here, because we have a less than or equal to sign, we know we're gonna include minus seven in our solution set. So we're gonna put an open bracket right here, opening to the right at minus seven, and a parentheses opening to the left at positive seven. We're not including positive seven in our solution set. And we're including every value in between minus seven and plus seven. And that's all there is to it. So we simply had to rearrange things at the very beginning to get it in proper inequality notation so we can draw our solution graph. So let's look at a few more of these. Let's see, the next one we have is, excuse me, three less than two X minus one, which is less than or equal to six. All right, uh, we need to do a little rearranging here, but if we think of these as three different terms, um, this isn't a whole lot of work to be done. So we can add one, we're trying to isolate our X. So let's go ahead and add one to all three terms. These two terms will cancel. So we have three plus one is four, less than two X, less than or equal to six plus one is seven. All right, one more step. We wanna isolate our variable X. So let's go ahead and divide all three terms by a factor of two. These two terms cancel. Four divided by two is two, less than x, less than or equal to seven over two, which is also 3.5 or three halves. Um, this is actually a little bit easier to deal with or see when we're actually dealing with the number line. So let's go ahead and see what this solution graph looks like. All right, so all of our solutions, all of our values are gonna be in between two and three and a half, or 3.5. So let's put two right here. Let's draw a couple points on each side. Zero, one, three, four, okay. Um, so we know all our solutions, our, our solution is going to be the interval between two and three and a half. And um, we're not including two, so we're going to have a parentheses opening to the right. We're including seven over two or three and a half because we have a less than or equal to sign. So we're gonna put a bracket opening to the left at approximately three and a half, 3.5. It's gonna look something like this. And then we simply shade in between. 
So the interval of our solutions um, is actually going to be everything in between these two points, including the point 7.5. All right, let's do some more of these. These aren't um, anything that we don't know how to do. We just don't know that we could do it, if that makes sense. So let's take a look at minus 8 is less than or equal to 4 plus 3x uh, less than 3. Okay, so here we have a little bit to, of work to do to get an inequality notation. Uh, let's go ahead and treat these as all, uh, all these threes terms as individuals. So we have minus 4. We're subtracting 4 from all three terms. Let's go ahead and cancel these two terms. So we have uh, minus 12 less than or equal to 3x, which is less than minus 1. And one more step. We simply divide through all three terms by 3, which will isolate our variable in the middle. Those two threes will cancel. We have minus 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than minus 1 over 3. All right, so now we have it in our set notation. Our, excuse me, um, our, we have our solution interval. We have our solution set, so let's go ahead and draw our number line. This goes off in the negative direction. This goes off in the positive direction. Um, let's go ahead and put uh, minus 2 here, minus 1 here, 0 minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Okay, so we know that all of our solutions, um, or all of our values of our solutions are going to be in between the values minus 4 and minus 1 third. Um, we know that we're going to include minus 4 in our solution set because it's less than or equal to x. So we're going to have a bracket at minus 4 opening to the right, indicating that we're including minus 4. And then at minus 1 third, we're, uh, we're, we're going to put a parentheses opening to the left because we're excluding minus one-third from our solution set. So it's going to be somewhere right about there. And we're going to shade everything in between. And that gives us our solution interval. Alright, so we're getting pretty familiar with this. Not a whole lot to them. Let's just do a few more for practice. The next one we have is minus 4 over 3 is less than... Uh, one half x plus three less than two over three, two thirds. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for x right here. We can subtract three from all three terms. All we're basically doing when we're doing this is shifting our graph. We're not really changing anything. So we have uh, minus four over three, um, three is the same as nine over three, so minus nine over three instead of three. So we have minus 13 over three, less than one half x, less than or equal to two over three uh, minus three, which is minus nine over three. So two thirds minus nine over three is minus seven over three. Um, we're doing this really quick, just to the side. Um, we're subtracting fractions here. Um, not doing anything magical. So let's go ahead and isolate our variable x. We do so by multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 over 2, which is 2 over 1. So let's multiply all three terms by 2 over 1. 2 over 1. All right, we're just using what we know and we're applying it to compound inequalities. So here we have 2 times minus 13 is a minus 26 over 3, less than, these cancel, so we have x in the middle, less than or equal to, minus 7 times 2 is minus 14, 3 times 1 is 3. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this graph looks like. This goes off in the negative infinity, this goes off in the positive infinity, and let's go ahead and put uh, minus 7 in the middle, just just for no reason. Minus 5, minus 4. 1, 2, 3. We'll learn how to scale these a little better as more, the more we do them. More of them we do so. Um, minus 26 over 3 um, is somewhere right about here. And we have a, a less than sign, so we're going to be opening a parentheses right here. We're going to be opening it to the right. And minus 14 over 3 is approximately right here. 
Um, we're going to use a bracket because we have a less than or equal to sign. So it's going to look something like that. And we're going to go ahead and shade in between. And this is our solution interval. All right. Let's go ahead and do, uh, let's squeeze in a couple more here. Let's say we have minus one, uh, less than or equal to two X plus four, plus four divided by two, less than or equal to one. All right, so we have a little bit of work to do, so let's go ahead and solve for X in the middle. Um, we can quickly cancel uh, a few of these out. We can simplify by factoring out a factor of two. So we have minus one is less than or equal to x plus 2, which is less than or equal to 1. We simply factored out a 2 out of all three of these terms of this term. All right, all we have left to do is subtract minus 2 from all three terms, which will isolate our variable x in the middle. So we have minus 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to minus 1. Let's go ahead and write the solution graph or draw the solution graph. Let's go ahead and put minus two in the middle. Um, this is an and compound inequality, which means all of our, um, the solution points are going to be in between minus three and minus one. And we're going to include the endpoints because they're both less than or equal to. So we have a minus three right here. We're gonna put a bracket. We're including all the numbers greater than minus three, including minus three. And at minus one, we're gonna put a bracket here. We're going to include all the values less than minus one, including minus one. So that's our solution set. All right, that one looked a little difficult at the beginning, but it quickly panned out and simplified pretty easily. Um, that's actually the, the power of simplification. Um, when we simplify things, it uh, makes math much easier, and it's possible to be fun. So here's our final uh, one for this video. We have six is less than four times x plus two which is less than seven. And we're running out of time here, so let's go ahead and move through this one. We have six, which is less than, if we distribute this four into the parentheses, we have four X plus eight, which is less than seven. We can go ahead and subtract eight from all three terms. That'll give us minus two, less than four X. These two terms cancel less than minus one. Let's go ahead and divide all three terms by four so we can get x by itself in the middle. This results in minus one half, less than, these two terms cancel, so we have x less than minus one fourth. All right, so our solution graph will look something like this. All of our solution points will fall in between minus one half and minus one fourth. And we're actually gonna exclude our endpoints because we don't have an equal sign in either one of them, we're just less than. So at minus one half, we're going to have an open parentheses right here. And at minus one fourth, we're going to have an open parentheses, which is right here. So this, this interval solution is actually gonna be very small. It's gonna be right here, even though we're actually zoomed in here. All right, so uh, we're solving compound inequalities and we're, excuse me, um, we're solving compound inequalities and we're graphing the solutions of such on a number line. Um, we'll do some more of these in the next section, so I'll see you soon.